Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's take a closer look at the general solution to the ordinary differential equation. The second order differential equation, ordinary because we don't use damping yet. We're still working with the undamped system. And of course, we knew from an earlier video that the two possible solutions to the differential equation, why wow, that's a mouthful, the two solutions to the differential equation are either the sine of omega t or the cosine of omega, omega t with an amplitude associated with b or c. Now, the reason why I put down b or c is because the magnitude of b or c depends upon the amount of energy you put into the system. And the more energy you put into the system, the greater the amplitude. So B and C are definitely amplitude dependent. And let's assume that we can have two different constants there. But going back to the initial premise is that F equals MA or F equals minus KX in the case of a spring, we could say that MA equals minus KX, solve this for A, and then we realize that A is the same as the second derivative of position with respect to time. So here we know that the second derivative with respect to time of X of the position is equal to minus K over M times X, K being the spring constant, M being the mass of the oscillating object, X being the distance away from the equilibrium point. We know that one of the forms of the solution, we can write that x equals a sine of omega t, a being the amplitude of oscillation, omega being the angular velocity or angular frequency of the motion. If we then take the first derivative of that, the derivative of sine is a cosine, the derivative of omega t is omega, take the second derivative of, the, of that, so now we take the derivative of cosine is the minus sine, and the derivative of omega, is, uh, omega t is again omega, so this becomes omega squared. Now what we want to do is we want to take our differential equation and rewrite it in these terms. Now how do we do that? Well here we have the second derivative with, of x with respect to time and that is equal to minus a omega squared sine of omega t so we place that in here instead of this and plus k over m times x so plus k over m times x and x is equal to a sine of omega t. Why do we do that? Well, what we can do on the right side is we can factor out an a sine of omega t, and we do that over here, a sine of omega t, which leaves us with a minus omega squared and with a positive k over m, which is what we have over here. I rearranged the two, so I have the positive minus the negative, but we know that that is equal to zero. So that means this is equal to zero, and for that to always be equal to zero, this must equal zero. If that equals zero, we can write that, omega equals the square root of k over m. So that's another way of seeing that the angular frequency or the angular velocity is equal to the square root of the spring constant divided by the mass of the object. Now what we can say is since the solution to this differential equation is equal to either this or this, we can write then that then as a single solution. And the single solution will now take the form of this x of t equals a times the sine of omega t plus a phase angle. Now why put, a, put that little sub not there? Well, typically speaking, we use this as the angular frequency of the motion when there's no damping. And so that's how different, to differentiate it from omega when there is damping. So that simply means that there's no damping. We typically should put the sub not everywhere, but out of laziness we tend not to do that. But just so that you know that would be the proper form. And so A would be the amplitude of the motion, and then there would be a phase angle, because when you combine the sine and the cosine function, and the constants B and C are of different amplitude, then yes, you're going to have some sort of phase angle. And the result is that A is simply equal to the square root of B squared plus C squared, and the phase angle is the inverse tangent of C over B. Now, of course, if C and B are the same value, then the phase angle is 45 degrees, and if b and c is the same value, then of course we have the square root of 2 times b for the amplitude of a or the, the square root of 2 times c. So, um, well, this then would become what we'd call the general solution of our differential equation describing the oscillatory motion. Now in the next video, we're going to show you how we get this out of that because we might have seen that before, but you might wonder, well, how do you do that? How do you get these two possible solutions, combine them into one and make it look like that? Well, stay tuned, and the next video will show you how to do that.